optimize melee. This is more important than the build you made. You have to evaluate your movement and actions. We're going to generalize a melee character that uses their strength modifier just to look at its placement and actions. Welcome to Pack Tactics. Warning, some of the things I say in this video aren't strictly just melee. I also talk about javelins frequently because it's important to utilize everything at your disposal. Now, there's a reason why a video like this doesn't exist until now. Running forwards and attacking clearly works. I mean, you're surviving the encounters and that's all that matters, right? We're getting the rewards and the story beats anyways. But I'm pretty sure you want more out of the encounters than just that and if you're really good at utilizing all the correct moves and actions, then you can handle more encounters, and that will translate to more gameplay. It's exactly what you want. Why else would you watch optimization content? Anyways, we're gonna start with the open field. We have these bandits, and you have your allies behind you. You are the front line of the group. You want initiative, you go first, and it looks like you can just walk up to the bandit and just attack one of them. You don't see any ranged weapons either on them. This is very important. Whatever you do, do not run up to them. What you should do is exploit their speed, have them dash to you instead. Throw javelins and move back. Once they dash into range, you know what to do. The reason why you don't ready an action to attack is because you can't use multi-attack with it. And you want to take as less damage as you possibly can. Polar Master is worth mentioning here too to take advantage of your speed and 10 foot reach. Move in, attack, move out without triggering opportunity attacks. Then when the enemy moves close to you, you can reaction opportunity attack with the reach weapon. In some cases like the Barbarian with 40 foot movement, the creature has to dash to them. The Barbarian took no damage because they took the smart move, also reaction attack. New scenario, you can clearly see they have ranged weapons and they're further away now. There's many solutions here, but let's talk about dodging first. Until the start of your next turn, any attack roll made against you has disadvantage if you see the attacker, and you make dexterity saving throws with advantage. This is huge. It's the default way to end a turn in case you get attacked. Never end your turn doing nothing. Always end your turn doing something. Dodge is something. Dodge should be your default answer to idle every time. Be paranoid. You're risking your life. It's for in case you're caught off guard or make a miscalculation, like for example the bandits happen to have crossbows. All the shots are made with disadvantage if you're dodging. You can also move forward and dodge. That's one of the safest ways to deal with archers. It's not the most optimal though, but it's more optimal than dashing in this case. If you dash to one of them, all the other archers are still fine. So they'll just shoot you normally and the bandit you ran up to will just drop his crossbow and swing with his scimitar normally. You could have been in a better position if you dodged. If you look at all the creatures in the books, you'll find that a large number of them don't have ranged attacks, and those that do, you'll notice their ranged attacks are weaker than their melee attacks. You make it even weaker by dodging because of disadvantage. When is the correct time to dash? I think it kind of explains itself. Big rooms where nothing's happening, fleeing enemies, blah blah blah. If the encounter has a spellcaster, get him first. He's the biggest threat of the fight. Dashing up to him might be a good idea to trigger a panic misty step, for example, instead of casting a fireball at you and your party. Next topic, please have backup weapons. Never stick to one weapon. Get javelins, get reach weapons. The more you play the game, the more you see stupid things like flying creatures with ranged attacks, or creatures where if you hit them with a melee weapon, you take automatic damage. These kinds of creatures destroy you if you don't have backup weapons. I've seen oozes corrode metal. I've seen everything. They do appear from time to time, even in modules, and trust me, they're scary. For those DMs out there who watch me, please hand these marshals magic weapons and lightning javelins. They really need them. Next subject, working with spellcaster. There has to be a good relationship here. Both of you are working as a team after all. If a caster casts sleep on a creature, you obviously don't wake it up by attacking it unless it's the last creature on the field or your team tells you to do so. You might think that's a no-brainer, but I've seen players do this a few times and obviously 
obviously the caster gets frustrated because it's an incredibly dumb move and you waste their spell slot. By the way, it's fine for a caster to cast an AoE hypnotic pattern on you, for example. If you happen to fail the save, the find familiar can shake you out of the condition. So don't worry about it. Let's cast an interesting spell and talk about your placements. A strange tugging, wriggling sensation rises within you as you complete the incantation. You feel the sensation build and you shout, releasing it. And the webbing in your hand spreads suddenly, wrapping itself around your hand before vanishing in a flash and in the same instant a sprawling spider web springs forth like your spider-man this video is sponsored by describe where you can get professionally written box descriptions of everything thousands of scenes they recently released a new map it's an airship hangar perfect for a spell jammer adventure you can easily put this on roll 20 and other vtt's mouse over points of interest and read descriptions to your players i highly recommend you use this one because of multiple things. The monk can get their muskets. And oh my god, the players can steal an airship and travel to other planes of existence. Describe has made scenes of multiple places found beyond the prime material plane that can feel completely alien and fun. You can send your players to hell and have a heck of a good time. Ah, the arrival at hell, the open land of complete freedom stretches ahead. Everything done here is entertainment. I'm convinced. I highly recommend you check them out and if you do, please press the link in the description that helps me too. Describe.com slash packtactics. And if you like what you see, they hope to earn your subscription. Use the code packtactics at the checkout for 10% off your first subscription payment. That's packtactics in one word, by the way. Back to web. You should stand right in front of the web and make sure they don't get out of it somehow. Throw javelins, use polearm with reach. If they do end up stuck in the web, you'll have advantage your attacks. If you and your enemies are stuck in the web somehow, then both of you attack each other normally because advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. Lastly, if the web is in the way for whatever reason, the caster can drop their concentration anytime they want, even off their turn. Remember that. Moving on, let's say the caster cast conjure animals. Here's what you do. You can maybe mount the animals. You can even step over them if they're tiny size like velociraptors, depending on your size, or go for another target. You can throw javelins. Lastly, you can use a reach weapon like a polearm. Shove action. Sometimes you can push people into area of effect spells or off buildings or into lava. There's many examples, but these examples don't appear often. Even though you're good at shoving, that doesn't mean you're the best at pushing creatures, like a warlock with repelling blast. But it's there, it might pop up actually. Quickly on the prone condition, that's part of shove. That can be a good idea if all the party members are melee marshals and don't have flanking rules. But other than that, don't use it. Last topic, doorway dodging. I already made a video about it. I highly recommend you watch that video right after this because I explained it super well there. This scenario happens often in dungeon crawls, and usually you're in the front line, so that means it might be your job to block that door and dodge to keep your friends safe. You're not best fit for the job though, compared to a caster with high AC, but you might have to do it anyways, depending on the turn order. Conclusion, I see the same thing time and time again, and it frustrates me. Run forward and attack, don't think, just do. I hope this will spice up your gameplay, Mr. Marshall. Communicate with your casters and plan with them. Be aware of the terrain, use it all to your advantage, have them come to you. There's a reason why we use these battle maps and not theater of the mind. Where you stand and where you move is super important, and it's a shame you're not really using what the artist or the DM is showing you on this map. Look, you can push him off the rails here. He'll be out of the encounter. Look, this is clearly a doorway. Perfect to spice up something new. Doorway dodging. If you doorway dodge there, your DM and the other players are going to be surprised because you're thinking, and that's what we want. The games are more interesting that way. The other players might realize, ah, this is working in our favor. Smart. Maybe as time goes, the DM also starts doorway dodging. How do you tackle that? Well, you can tell me in the comments. It's a good lesson for everyone. Let's enhance our gameplay instead of walking forward and attacking. Shout out to Daniel for helping me with this video. Me and Describe hope to earn your subscription. Yes, a reminder, please check them out. I think they're incredibly optimal. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.